right guys, well, we're on day two of our Hawaii adventure with Donald and Shai. And uh, this morning, you know, got up, enjoyed a little bit of coffee off camera, and then grabbed my fishing pole and went out and did some fishing out on the river. Uh, just getting back, it's about mid-morning. We did have a nice successful day. Got a little stringer of bass. I'm going to clean them up real quick, get them all taken care of. Uh, we'll put them in the refrigerator to cool, and then uh, that we could be the dinner for tonight or maybe tomorrow night. We'll see. We'll see where we're at. But anyways, today's going to be a pretty simple day. We did a lot of traveling yesterday, and so I feel like today we're just going to chill a little bit more, and, and that's kind of been the theme of the morning. We're going to do some local exploring right down here on this bottom because it's just absolutely stunning, beautiful guys. I mean, I just can't um, express enough how gorgeous it is down here with the uh, changing fall colors and everything. And there's a big grove of trees just down the road a ways that I want to go do some exploring later today that is just absolutely stunning. It looks like there might be some uh, ruins of some old homesteads and things like that that we might also check out today. But first things first, let's get these uh, fish taken care of. So one of the things that I'm really trying to do here lately is just find different ways to supplement um, my food supply when I'm out in these remote areas. You know, it, groceries have gotten more expensive, gas has gotten a lot more expensive. So any way that I can kind of go about um, you know, securing me a little bit more food along the way and, and extending the range of my food supply, I can. And I love fishing. It's something that I've loved to do for a long time. I didn't do it a lot with the dogs just because um, it was just a little bit hard to get out and away out in the water like that and away from them and make sure that they were safe and everything was good. So um, it's, it's nice to be able to do that now. Definitely miss Daisy. Uh, but now that I am without dogs, you know, I definitely plan to do a lot more foraging and fishing and even some hunting along the way when I can't when I can and it makes sense. So Anyways, like I said, we're gonna clean these these fish up. They're fairly smaller fish But that's nice because I got a small skillet So I like I'd rather have a couple small fish that I can fry up than large fish that are hard to fit in the skillet So we're anyways, we're gonna get these guys all done and uh, then we're gonna do some exploring around Tell you when you're on a trip like this, it's always nice to have some food to get out of the refrigerator, but it's equally nice to be able to put some food back in the refrigerator.
All right, well, we got a decent little stash of firewood. It's been a little while since I've been able to have a fire on the channel since it's been summer, but now the fire band's over, hopefully that will all change. All right, guys, so we're back on the road again, and our plan today is to actually get to a ranch that I have marked that I saw on Google Earth. Now, it is on the other side of the river, so we're gonna cross the river right now and get to the other side. There's actually two ways that you can get to the Haiti Harl Ranch, which is the ranch that we are on our way to. Now, earlier in the day during his solo adventures, Donald already verified a river crossing that was upriver from our location and made it to the ranch and already had checked it out. I'm glad I pushed a little further. It looks like there's some buildings over there. As it turned out, Donald hadn't realized that this ranch was already on our planned destination for the evening. He thought the ranch we were going to check out was much further down river. Donald had already verified the upriver crossing. We decided now we would go ahead and try the downriver crossing and see if we could get to the ranch from that direction. Might be high centered. I think you're high centered. I think it might be a little high centered. I'll try to give you a push. Yeah, that'd be nice. Are you in four wheel drive? Four low. You're, you're, none of your tires on this side are going doing anything. There you go. All right. So what basically happened here is we hit this r really silty spot in the road where, I mean, it's basically like you're sitting on talcum powder. Uh, Scheisberg's just a little lower than ours. He's high centered. So basically his frame and upper body is just sitting on the silt and his tires are basically, it's like his vehicle's on jack stands. So is this your Yankum rope, Donald? It is. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> if not, I'll move. I mean, we'll have to see once the rope stretches out how much space you got. I don't think it's going to take much to pull them out. I don't think so. Does the Nissan Frontier have enough poop to pull this in? Donald, while you're putting your stuff away, I'm gonna go ahead and scout ahead a little bit and just make sure there's nothing ahead that's gonna keep the band from getting through. Okay, copy. All right, guys, well, we're turned around again. So, we got up to this point, but we've gotta kinda of weasel around this hillside. It gets extremely narrow right here to the point where Donald's not even comfortable doing it in his rig, and he's the skinniest of the two of us. But I, with the van, would be I don't even know if there's enough width there for the whole van and I would be also extremely off camber and it doesn't really get any better all the way down so Donald drove a different route to the location we're going to this morning check that out so we're going to turn around and try that route we just wanted to see what this was like and now we know so if you're uh, if you come out here if you have a very skinny low profile vehicle um, you might like to try it but yeah, even a side-by-side, -side, I'd be even a little bit nerved going down through this. I have to admit, I was pretty disappointed to find ourselves having to turn around again. I do believe that with a spotter, Donald's Frontier could have made it. But he didn't want to try it, and I don't blame him. So we decided to head back to the same camping spot we were at the night before, which wasn't a disappointment to any of us. It was a gorgeous spot. and it gave us the opportunity to rinse the trail dust off. Plus, I knew I'd get another chance to throw a lure at those bass again the next morning. Oh, 